Εδώ λοιπόν στο TV War του Mad και τα Μεταλχάμερ στα παρασκήνια του Rocking Athens Festival λίγη ώρα πριν η Heaven and Hell βγουν στη σκηνή έχουμε για ακόμα μία φορά την τιμή να μιλάμε με τον Ronnie James Dio τη φωνή αυτής της μουσικής Hello Ronnie, welcome to Greece once again Thank you so much, τι κάνεις Mad TV We're fine, we're fine, thank you Well, uh, Ronnie, some uh, months ago you released a new album from Heaven and Hell, The Devil, uh, you know and its success was massive once again. It seems that you have the Midas touch. Everything you touch turns to gold. I mean, how important was for you uh, this album to enjoy success? Well, we didn't start doing this um, with doing an album in mind. Uh, it started with the album called uh, Black Sabbath, The Dio Years. And we wrote three songs and had no plans to do any more than that, just to write the songs so that the people who bought the album would have something more than just songs that live things and you know things they had heard before we thought that was important um, you know for for the band and from there someone suggested uh, a while afterward that maybe you'd like to tour with it well we had time to do that so we said okay and so we did and just only nine shows and it stopped with the show we did in uh, at Radio City Music Hall which became a, a DVD and you know all the other things that happened and then that was it and then someone else suggested, not in the band, but manage management or an agency. Well, you know, people would like to see you tour more. So um, would you like to go to Europe? So we said, okay. So we did a European tour and that was it. And then they said, well, how about Australia and Japan? We went, okay. So we went to Australia and Japan and the same thing going back to Europe again and the same thing with doing an American tour. But each time we didn't really have plans to carry on and, and do any much more than that. Then after all the touring was finished, uh, someone said, well, maybe you should do an album. And so we thought about that and said, mm, yeah, I think it makes sense. So it wasn't something that was premeditated that we had thought about from the beginning. We we're going to do this and this and this and then do an album. So doing the album was important for us uh, because it was the final step for, for what we had tried to accomplish. And I think what we tried to accomplish is to uh, not only to enjoy ourselves, but to I think keep the people happy who had supported us all those years when it was uh, the Dio years more than anything else. And, and I think it made us n realize how important it was for us to tour again together, how, many, how much uh, desire there were, was for people out, out there in, in the world who wanted to see this band play again and to hear those songs again. So we felt it was important for whatever legacy we have to do an album. And so it was important for us that, that it was successful, but we never went into anything we did thinking that worried that oh we we better be good uh, this better be a successful album i think that we always knew that whatever we were going to to do was going to work very well because we i've known certainly in all the do years that i've played just with my own band you know how, how many people always come up and said oh it would be great if you got back together with tony and geezer and etc etc so i knew it was going to be important and i thought it would be successful that what what was needed was to have a good album and that was the important thing. So it was important for us for it to be successful, but it was more important for us to play together and to take it very slowly because we have a history of breaking up so many times. And I think that was because we planned too far ahead. Uh, if you plan two years in advance, usually some, th something happens after six months when someone says, no, I'm not going to do that now. And now you've destroyed all the things you started and you've destroyed the band one more time. And uh, everything becomes political and very stupid. So that's why this time we went very, very slowly. Well, we'll think about maybe doing a tour. We'll think about doing another tour. We'll think about doing an album. And each time when we made the decision, we knew it was the right one because we committed ourselves just to that, not to something that was going to be so far in the future. So I hope you get something from that. I'm sorry I talked so long about it, but it's I think it, there needed to be history behind the, mm -hmm. the answer to the question. Well, uh, considering my own experience by listening to your albums with the Rainbow with Sabbath, your solo albums, uh, I would say that uh, this is not just entertainment, as you uh, said before, but uh, is uh, life-altering. Uh, do you sometimes consider, do you sometimes uh, feel responsible for the lives of the people that listen to your music? I always feel responsible for it. Always, always, always. And that, I think, is what has made uh, my personal fans so strong about me because I try to give to them all the time. I know how important they are to me. Without them, I'd be nothing. So I always take the time to sign their autographs, to talk to them, and I've made so many friends in my life who were started as fans who have ended up being some of my best friends. 
because I know I, I usually find that uh, Dio fans are very bright people. They have to be smart enough to try to understand what I'm trying to write uh, because I don't I don't write songs usually that are about. Uh, I don't anyway. I love you, baby. I don't do things like that. I try to do things that make pe people think a little bit more, to make the song their song. Um, so I don't point directly to to what what I'm saying. I point to what I think that how they can make the song theirs. Uh, an example is with Rainbow in the Dark, for example. If I talk to ten people, is it true that you didn't like the song in the first place? I didn't know. I wanted to tear it up. I wanted to get rid of it. And you know, to this day, it's still okay with me if they get rid of it. I don't. I don't really care. Um, I just felt it was a bit too poppy for me. But you know, it, it's a good thing we did it because it certainly touched a lot of people. Um, and I think at that time, I was writing about myself because to me, Rainbow in the Dark was, uh, you know, someone who was uh, had to be pushed aside and pushed away. Uh, you know, someone who had so much potential, who had so much uh, opportunity to be something, but wasn't given that opportunity by the horrible people in this world. Um, and I felt at that time that maybe I was a rainbow in the dark. Maybe not so much with the music, but maybe in my personal life. And uh, my point was that if, if I speak to 10 people, maybe only one of them knows what I was really talking about when I wrote that song. And the other nine people have completely different ideas about it. And I say, well, when they say to me, no, I, it's about this, and I go, you're right. And the next one says, and it's about this, and it's completely different. You're right. And they're right because they've made it their own song, and that's what I've always tried to do. So I found the Dio fans were always very bright, um, who uh, they, they really they really cared, and to let them down to me was just the most horrible thing I could ever do. So all the fans I have, and I have so many fans in Greece too, I mean, because I, I think once again, you know, being being Italian, you know, we probably have a little bit more sympathetic, or, you know, being neighbors anyway. Um, and I think that, you know, an Italian Greek uh, at attitude is a little bit the same. So I've always been very, very blessed uh, for people who really have given me a lot of love, especially in Greece, but all over the world. Um, but uh, it, it, it's, it's that the fans mean something to me. I'm not a liar. I'm not a false person. I'm not a phony person. I could never be that. Uh, so I take all the time I can to, uh, to hug, kiss their babies and to hug them and to shake their hands and to sign things for them and kiss the girls, not because I'm... You know, I'm trying to make time with them or anything, but because, uh, you know, it's my way of showing affection for people who have been so good to me, who have made my life so easy. Without them, you know, who knows what I would be. So they are the most important thing to me, the fans. But without them, I, w I really would be, you know, probably a plumber right now or an electrician or something. I don't know. You know this is very important for us, the fans, to I know that uh, you are such an easygoing, such a uh, respectful man towards your fans. It's it's very important for us to know and for the fans out there to, to realize this. And uh, you say this every time. And uh, I know from my own experience that you sign the autographs and you talk to each other in person. And this is really great. I mean, uh, if there is such a thing as a karma, you're one step to, to Nirvana. <laughs> well, it's your karma. I believe very much in karma. I really do. And you, you get what you give, always. So I try to give what they give me. So, you know, together we're a great team. Fans and, and, and me are a great team. And you know, they are my friends. At the end of the day, they are my friends. Okay, so how was it working with the Gizzer and Tony again uh, in the studio? I mean, were there any quarrels about the direction of the new album? You know, we've, we've honestly never ever had any quarrels. It must seem as though, to everyone who doesn't know what goes out on the inside, that every time we broke up we would have fights and punch each other and swear at each other. I can't remember in, well, it's been now since 1979, so that's, uh, uh, was it 30 years? I can't remember ever a crossword being said amongst any of us at all. No one ever shouted at anyone. We just uh, broke up because of, you know, some in the early days because some people did too many drugs and believed too many idiots. Uh, and that's not me, by the way, because I'm not a drug guy. Um, but I'm not pointing fingers at anyone else. Perhaps I was to blame as much as anyone else was in some way. But we never had a problem that way. So each time we got back together again, we never ever thought that it was any different than, than we had seen each other yesterday. First time, 10 years, we hadn't, hadn't even spoken to each other in 10 years. We saw each other the next 10 years later. Hey, Tony, hey, geez, just like we had, and the same this time was 12 years, exactly the same. Uh, so we, ne we never have any problems with that. As far as direction goes, Tony and I especially have a real, real affinity to, to each other, a real, a real simpatico as far as writing goes. We write so easily together. Uh, as I mentioned before, when we did the, uh, the Dio album, or Dio album, the, the Dio Years album, 
we were only going to only ask to write two songs, not three. Well, we wrote two. So easy. Like, should we write another one? Yeah, okay. And we wrote this song called The, the Devil You Know, which is, a, or not The Devil You Know, but uh, The Devil Cried, which is, you know, wow, what a great song. They're all, the, the three things we, we wrote were really good, but especially that one. And um, uh, so we knew from that that it would be easy to carry on. And we have a, we just seem to have a way, both Tony Engieser and I, uh, of knowing what we we're supposed to write together. We don't have to. We don't ever have to talk about what direction we're going in. We know what we are. We don't write happy, jolly songs. We tend to write darker kind of pieces. A lot of that has to do, of course, with the fact that Tony, you know, plays that way. Geezer plays that way. I think that way. I sing that way. I write that way. So we just ha we just have uh, um, just this wonderful rapport together. And it was never ever every, any question about what we were going to write. We just wrote the things that we had each composed. Um, not whole songs, but we, like Tony had 25 or 30 things, and I had uh, 15 things, and Geezer had 15, and we just listened to them all and said, I like that, like that, like that, like that, like that, great. So when people ask us, could you do it, could you think you could write another album together? We say, I think we already have, because we have all those songs. So the answer to the question is, we've never had a problem, and we know exactly what we're supposed to be, and we were so happy to write them. And the writing process was very much different for us this time, too. I think that's important to tell you. In the, in the earlier days and before, we used to go into a studio with all of our gear and we, you know, everybody turn up and bam, off you go. Well, it, you know, it becomes, becomes hard to communicate sometimes that way, especially for the singer who doesn't have all that volume to deal with. Um, and so, you know, we, we, just, we just thought this time maybe it's easier in a more controlled environment. So we did all the writing for this album in my home, in my studio. Uh, but it's just a demo studio, not, but we recorded everything and it, I mean, it sounded as, to me as good as when we did the final, the final product when we recorded it in Wales. But we did it together in a smaller room, so we had communication, you know, never ever a problem. It was just a joy to write and I mean, we could write another album tomorrow, I mean, and, and probably, I mean, it only... Will you? I, I think we will, but not tomorrow. It'll be, it'll be a while, it'll be quite a while. I think that you know there are things that we need to stop for, uh, and there are things that are going to stop. Tony needs to have an operation on his hand, um, and it's gonna take probably about six months for him to recover from that. So during that six months, Dio's gonna play again. Oh, well, that's great, that's great to hear. You know, I've been working on uh, the album um, Magicka 2 and 3, because it's something I need to do. Uh, it's always meant to be a trilogy, and it's, I need to finish it. If I don't finish it before I die, which could be tomorrow, and one never knows, then I won't have finished what I, what I wanted to start. I need to tell the end of the story. So I have, uh, I have about nine, nine things that I'm working on for that. Uh, I've just been working on my own at the time because uh, the rest of the guys are doing other things. Rudy Zarzo, our bass player still, and obviously in, in Craig Goldie and Simon Wright, uh, have been doing other things while I'm doing this. But luckily, they, you know, they, they want to do Dio as, as badly as I do. So that'll be the next thing for me to do. I'll, I want to finish that album, and we want to tour again. We may tour in November or December, probably come to, uh, to Europe to tour. And hopefully, we'll be able to come, come to Greece and do that as well. So I have a lot of things to do, and uh, uh, one of them is uh, you know, filling that time between doing another album with Heaven and Hell, whenever that may be. Um, so yeah, we can do another album, and I'm sure we will do another one. I, th I think we're just, we really like to play together a lot. Okay, well, you're a musician, you're a singer since, I don't know, the beginning of time probably. Uh, yeah, <laughs> almost, yeah. Have you ever considered uh, your life without uh, doing cards, without singing? Have you ever considered retirement? Have you ever think of yourself playing golf or something? No, no, I, I wouldn't know how to do things like that. You know, I mean, I, I love athletics, I love sports. Sports is my life, I mean, without sports, I probably would never have become, you know, uh, as aggressive as I am. Uh, I always wanted to be a baseball player, and I would trade my what I've done in my my life to be a baseball player. I would trade it right now, if I could have been a great baseball. Player. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Never. But I would have because it's what I what I really wanted to do. I really wanted to be a baseball player. My life was so wound up in sports, and it still is. And I love athletics because, because to me, the athlete is dedicated. I mean, to be a great athlete, you must always dedicate yourself to it every day. Um, say a man like Kobe Bryant, uh, who dedicates his life every day to, you know, eight hours a day to shooting and shooting and thinking and doing things. 
I admire them so much. A boxer like Muhammad Ali or, uh, you know, some of the other great boxers uh, today, uh, Manny Pacquiao, they have to dedicate themselves to it. And I admire them so much that athletics and music to me are very much the same. I think you have to dedicate yourself to stay at least, if not on top, at, at a good level. And that's what I've tried to do with my life. So retirement, I would, could never think of retiring. Um, because then I would be letting my sports heroes down. And I've been so lucky that I've met so many of my heroes. Uh, and it's just amazing to me that they want to be musicians and I want to be, you know, and all the rest of us, all, a lot of you know, musicians want to be sports people. But, so I think there's a real affinity there. But as far as retirement goes, no, I would never know what to do with my life. And I'm, I'm, too, I'm too always up all the time. I, I just can't sit around and lay there and do nothing. I mean, I watch television a lot when I'm in a, in a room, in a hotel room, because I've got nothing else to do. But when I'm home, I don't watch television hardly at all. I'm always in my studio working. I'm always thinking about music. I'm thinking about uh, writing because I've, I've, I've got about a third of a book that I'm writing about, you know, my, my, myself. Uh, not myself, but my experiences. Is it ever going to be published? Oh, absolutely will. Yeah, I'm going to have you know, publishers who are, you know, in line to finish it. Well, you know, I, I can't finish it yet because I have too much music to make. Uh, I have to be. I have to really focus in on doing one thing at a time. Rainbow in the dark too. That's, I'm sure that's what it'll be called, because it's a perfect title. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect title, and it's a song that you didn't like. A title that you didn't like, and you're gonna name your book after that. It's great. Well, uh, you know, I didn't say it wasn't a good title. I, ju <laughs> I just said it was a song that was a bit too poppy for me. That's all. But again, in re retrospect, it certainly helped the deal band a lot. It really did. Okay, Ronnie, your message to the Greek fans over there. Well, just thanks for supporting uh, Heaven and Hell, and myself in particular, all the time. Uh, it's always a joy to come to Greece. Uh, it's almost like coming home to me. I know so many wonderful people here, and that includes all of you that I don't know personally. Some, someday I hope maybe I can get to know you personally. But for now, uh, Mad TV has given me a chance to speak to you. And thank you very, very much. I love you guys. Thanks.